Hey, what's going on guys? Andrew Fillion here, and today we're gonna jump right into it. I'm talking about the carnivore diet. Unless you've been living for under a rock for the past year, you've heard about the carnivore diet. And most of the times when people hear about it, they think it's a fad, they think it's the new thing, and it'll go away. I'm here to tell you guys, carnivore is here to stay. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down why that is. To kick things off right from the beginning, while there's a lot of great things going on, the first thing a lot of people wanna do is lose weight. Well, it's been discovered through studies over the generations that carbohydrate intake leads to weight gain and there's a good correlation for this and it all ties in to satiety and your hunger levels of the three macronutrients you've got protein carbohydrates and fat carbohydrates have the least impact on satiety whereas fat has the highest levels of satiety followed by protein then fiber simple and complex carbohydrates are way at the bottom they don't help at all so people discovered if you limit carbohydrates it's easier to lose weight and over the years the ketogenic diet was discovered. The ketogenic diet restricts carbohydrates. Some start at 50 grams per day, but a lot of people go even lower than that to 25 grams or some going even as low as zero. But that's where the restrictions end. You can get your protein and you can get your fats from any source you want on the ketogenic diet. The carnivore diet, however, takes things one step further and it's a really great idea, allow me to explain. If you're on a ketogenic diet, you can have your fats coming in any type of form that you take them. And that means you can get your fats from vegetable oils. But when you're on carnivore, you're only getting your fats from dietary fat that's going to be meat and other animal products. Think about this for a second. The fat on your body, or the fat on a bear, or the fat on a cow, it's all the same fat. It's all adipose tissue. And adipose tissue is the scientific term for fat. This fat is species agnostic. So my fat is the same as your fat, which is the same as a dog's fat, which is the same as a cow's fat, and so on and so forth. So if my body is hungry, it's craving nutrients, there's no better option for getting fat than to get something that already fits its blueprint. Fat is extremely nutritious when it comes from animals. A lot of people don't even know this, but most of the vitamins that you need for proper body function actually come from animal fat. Red meat in particular has all the essential B vitamins, has plenty of other vitamins and minerals. It lacks a few, namely vitamin C, and we'll cover that in a few minutes. The gist of it is that animal Animal products are actually more potent in vitamins and minerals than any fruit, vegetable, or green. And what I'm about to say is going to be kind of weird to some people, but think about the liver king. If you've seen this guy, yes, he's bombastic. He's very sensational. He also got caught using performance enhancing drugs, which is no surprise. I mean, look at the guy. Unfortunately, the, all the drama around him has kind of put a damper on the carnivore culture, but his diet is actually correct. Liver has the most potent availability of micronutrients out of any organ in the body. So when you're eating raw beef liver, it's going to be incredibly potent in two things in particular. It's going to be vitamin A. It's going to be my favorite B vitamin of them all, cobalamin. Now, why do I like cobalamin so much? It's because it's the B vitamin responsible for regenerating and creating new red blood cells. This is hugely important and it's not talked about nearly enough. Cobalamin of all the B vitamins, in my opinion, is the most important. Now we gotta get serious here for a second. Men and women do have different bodies, different needs. Us men, we don't have menstrual cycles, women do. So it's actually even more important for a woman to be on carnivore than a man. The unfortunate part of this, when it comes to vegans or vegetarians, it's mostly the women that are doing it. Men don't need that much convincing to eat meat, but a lot of women do, and that's really unfortunate because the cobalamin will go a long way at regenerating those red blood cells. In fact, you can't regenerate blood without it. Now, granted, you could get cobalamin through supplementation. Vitamin B12 tablets are available at grocery stores or pharmacies. The thing is, most people don't even know about that, so they're not getting it. And multi vitamins, if you look at the label, the amount of cobalamin that's in a daily multivitamin is laughable. Laughable. It, in my opinion, it's not even worth taking. If you are going to do carnivore, you're going to need a way of getting in vitamin C. Vitamin C can be supplemented. You can take it in a lot of different forms. What matters the most is that you do take it. Centuries ago, when there were sailors out on the Caribbean, I'm talking about that 1400 to 1800 time frame. These sailors would be out at sea for months at a time. A lot of the times they could only eat fish. 
Because they never had vitamin C, they ended up developing scurvy. This is super easy to avoid. You just have to have some kind of vitamin C supplementation. Personally, I'm not opposed to having a little bit of fruit or leafy green vegetables to supplement for vitamin C. It's not mandatory. You could make it work without, but I do think having a little bit of blueberries, maybe some melon, maybe some spinach can go a long way at preventing that. And I wanna talk about the next thing, which is going to be inflammation. A lot of carbohydrate rich foods are loaded with inflammatories, especially grains, oats, granola, wheat, very, very high in the inflammation. When people go on carnivore, one of the first things they notice, their skin gets way better. Yes, they do lose body fat, but they overall just appear thinner, they're less bloated, and all of this is because the inflammation gets completely wiped out. Now, why are we so ingrained on eating grain? Allow me to rewind a little bit back to World War II. At that time frame, all the men in all the different countries were getting shipped off to war. That left the women back home filling two jobs, mother and father. They had to take care of the kids. They also had to work jobs, which meant they didn't have time to prepare food. They didn't have time to make breakfast. This is where cereal comes in. This is where wheat comes in, granola, oatmeal, you name it. This all came to be in the 1940s so that women could feed the kids and still work jobs. Well, after the war was over and the men returned home, some of these big corporations realized that this was very profitable. So even though it wasn't needed anymore, we kept up with it anyways. Prior to that, the normal breakfast was to have eggs, some sausage, maybe a little bit of ham. That's a normal breakfast for centuries. It wasn't until after the war that now everybody is having oatmeal and cereal and different breads. It's bogus. And it gets more sinister than that. These food companies fund the studies that say they're so great, which they're not. Have you ever heard someone say that eggs give you cholesterol? It's bullcrap. It's a complete lie. It doesn't even make sense. People have been eating eggs for millennia. Now, ever since the 1940s, they somehow give you heart disease. Does not make any sense. These food companies pay the universities a lot of money to do a study and they tell them up front what they want the conclusion to be because that's how they get the money. So when the studies come out, the answer they wanted from the beginning is in the report. It doesn't have to be true they can twist the data to tell whatever story they're trying to sell. And that is where things get so out of whack. It's a cultural problem. The obesity crisis going on here in America and unfortunately other Western countries, it's all because of the rise of processed foods. I don't care which grocery store you shop at, look at the nutrition labels. They're almost certainly going to have one of these three ingredients and heaven help you if they've got all three. The first one's going to be some sort of enriched or unbleached wheat flour. Then you've got some sort of vegetable oil. Maybe you got soybean oil, canola oil, sunflower seed oil. It's going to have some kind of oil. And lastly, it's going to be the corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup too. Any combination of these is leading you to a very vast amount of inflammation. Not only that, it's not going to lead to any satiety. So you're going to be hungry after you eat it. Let's go to imagination land for a minute. You're at a party. It could be a birthday party. It could be a football party. It could be a work party. There's going to be a bunch of inflammatory carbohydrates there. And look, I've been there. You've been there. Did you ever feel full after eating one of these highly processed foods? No. Did you feel like crap afterwards? Yes. A million times yes. You leave parties feeling terrible every time. Tell me I'm wrong. I want to hear in the comments. Am I wrong about that? You always feel terrible leaving a social event. It's because of the highly inflammatory foods that we eat at them. Ugh. So that brings me to my point about sustainability of carnivore. There's a lot of people out there that say carnivore is not sustainable. There's a caveat to this. It's not that carnivore is not sustainable, it's that our social climate, our culture makes it unsustainable. Imagine if you will, you and seven other people go out to some event and they plop down a pizza. If you see seven people eating a pizza, we're gonna feel that social pressure. It's a hell of a drug. You're gonna end up having that pizza. You don't need it. You probably don't even want it, but you do it because of the peer pressure. If we want to make carnivore sustainable, which I believe is actually a good idea, there has to be a cultural shift. We have to go into our mimetic DNA and change things from socializing with carbohydrates and processed foods to moving away from that and normalizing meat, normalizing fasting. I'm not saying that you could never have a fruit or vegetable again, 
but I do think there's a lot of value in going cold turkey on a lot of these things and just eating meat. Maybe you do it for 90 days. Maybe you do it for half a year. Slowly over time, you can reintroduce fruits, vegetables, leafy greens, but never again should you be having enriched wheat flour, vegetable oils, or corn syrups. When it comes to weight loss or feeling healthy in general, it's not necessarily that eating carnivore cures any of these things. What's really going on is that you're not taking in the poison. When you stop taking the poison, these problems solve themselves on their own. I've been doing bodybuilding shows for almost three years now, and every time when I cut weight down to get stage lean, I'm doing either carnivore or keto to get there. So I've had some skin in the game, and I can always tell you I always feel my best when I'm on a cut, when I'm on a calorie restriction, doing keto and carnivore carnivore. Mental clarity is perfect. Skin, totally great. And I've always had excellent blood work. I've, I've had my blood checked numerous times, more than just my physical checkup. I have never had cholesterol problems. Even when I'm having 24 eggs in a day, not once do I ever have even a hint of a cholesterol problem ever been doing this for years. You guys, I'm gonna wrap this up here, but if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it. Also subscribe to the channel, and if you're just getting started with carnivore, I'm gonna be showing you guys in the very near future many different ways that you can work it into your lifestyle. Whether you have a busy office job, if you're on the go a lot, I'm gonna be showing you guys ways that you can creatively solve this problem so that you can dive into the carnivore experience. I'm gonna leave this here, my next video coming out, I'm doing carnivore jerky. I can't wait to show you guys that one. Until next time, peace.